All right, geeks, welcome back to another Hall of Justice. I got this box in that I've been waiting for. It's from my friend Alina in Texas again. Great bargains, great grabs. Let's go. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. All right, guys, not gonna take long. Um, I was supposed to have a couple other boxes. They were supposed to arrive today, but they didn't uh, come on time. Uh, got a message that said they were delayed, so I assume they'll come in tomorrow because it's pretty late. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, and I might just hold on to this video until those come and then splice it all together because I didn't want to wait to open this because there's some good stuff in here. All right, got my partner in crime. This is going to be quick because I'm anxious. All right, let's see what's in here. Ah, first we got Classic Falcon. I don't even know what bath wave this is part of. I just got it because this is a great deal and this Falcon is a really awesome figure and I've always wanted it. Oh, this is from the Mojo Wave. Okay, awesome. But yeah, I really, yeah, I'm collecting all the baths, but when I saw this, I grabbed it because of the figure, which is kind of rare. I'm always looking out for the bath. I didn't even realize it came with his uh, pet falcon. I forgot Falcon's uh, the pet falcon's name. Um, I might have to look that up. Or is it on the package? All right, I'll figure it out in a second. Anyway, let me get to this. this I don't tend to take a long time to get this stuff out of the boxes. <sighs> Sabretooth from the Giant Man Wave. So, I've decided that the next two baths I'm going to collect um, are Giant Man and the Sentinel. I don't know which I want to complete first. It depends on pricing and what I find. But those are two I'm focusing on now. So I grabbed this, got that surprisingly cheap um, for Sabretooth. Man. Good packaging. A lot of paper. No chance for damage. So that's not a complaint. It's actually joy. Oh yes, Lady Deathstrike. We need to update badly for Lady Deathstrike, but um, this figure is beautiful. I've seen online, never seen it in person, so I'm gonna have fun unboxing this. I'm gonna put it with my new Reavers. That way we can have a, a formidable group to fight against the x -Men. Now this figure is not part of a bath wave, but I got it just because this figure is kind of hard to come across and is really beautiful. It's a man thing, which is Marvel's version of Swamp Thing. Unabashedly, a little copying there. Um, I remember Man Thing from when I was growing up, but uh, I've seen that figure a lot online and I really like the figure, so saw it, dirt cheap, grabbed it. I'm going to go ahead and move this box over, this is a little wide, take up some space, uh, Blackheart, even though I was a heavy comic book reader, um, I, has, I stopped reading about three years ago I think, because my son had surgery, but I had never heard of Blackheart until Marvel vs. Capcom 2 when I was in college and we were playing that on Sega Dreamcast. Um, and I actually, to this day, have never read a comic book with Blackheart in it. I have no idea who Blackheart is outside of the video game. But that figure is stunning. <laughs> That's why I picked it up. Um, and it's part of the Onslaught wave, so it helped out. 
But man, I love that figure and I can't wait to open it. And I, I just, I can't get over how big and hefty these Toy Biz figures are. I didn't really remember from back in the days because uh, I stopped collecting just when Toy Biz came out. I used to get the other Marvel, I think it was the Icons or Marvel Collectors figures, I think. And I lost them all in the move, so I, I kind of gave up. So here we've got Sentry, and I believe there's two variants for the Sentry. I think this is the, reg no, this is a variant. I think the regular one has the long hair. But this is part of the Giant Man bath, so that's the main reason I picked this up. It wasn't much because of the Sentry. I don't particularly care for the figure. And let's see, what do we got left? Ooh, there is one figure left in here. Yeah, that's it. Check the box. Now, last but not least, I am going to actually <laughs> move that away presentation style. Make a little room. There we go. That makes more sense. And no, the mic is not <laughs> center stage. All right, so this figure, I'm a little giddy because I remember when this figure came out in stores. And again, I said at the time I wasn't collecting. And one of the things over the years, I I would go, when I go in Target, Walmart, uh, back in the days, KB Toys, whatever, I would always go in there and just look at the figures. And I was always taken aback by the Marvel Legends. And I just never bought them because, like I said, I had collected the Marvel Collector's Editions that were out previous to when they started the Legends line and I lost them all in the move so I just kind of didn't feel like starting over and I kind of I don't want to say I was burned because I burned myself but I just didn't want to get back into figure collecting because um, my original collection I probably had over 40 figures and they were all gone so I just never bought them but even up until last year I'd go into Target I'd look at every single legend pick up the box put them down never bought them and now that I'm collecting them I kind of kick myself in the head because I'm like man I could have got all these slowly over the years but this figure I do remember from back in the days and I always wanted it and never bought it because I was a big fan of him in the comic books I picked up and man this is heavy this has got to weigh over a pound Mr. Sinister Sentinel Wave and that bad boy is hefty and beautiful and when I open him up, man, uh, don't laugh at me if I shed a tear. Because one of the one of my favorite storylines before I stopped reading comics the first time was, um, I believe it was the, f no, it wasn't Fall of the Mutants. What was the storyline where Mr. Sinister created um, the Goblin Queen, made Jean Grey into the Goblin Queen? So what was it? No, it wasn't. Fall of Mutants. Inferno. The Inferno crossover event. When uh, Madeline, had, after fi Madeline found out she was, um, oh yeah, did I say Jean Grey was Goblin Queen? No, it was Madeline Pryor, Scott Summers, Cyclops' wife. She found out she was a clone of Jean Grey, and she kind of lost it and went crazy, and she was manipulated by Mr. Sinister, if I remember correctly. If I'm not, forgive me, correct me in the comments, but um, I just remember being a huge fan of Mr. Sinister when he first showed up. He was, it was back in when they introduced villains in really creative ways. Um, if you remember, Apocalypse was introduced over a couple of issues in X-Factor. He was back in the shadows. It was kind of like how wrestling changed, where wrestling used to watch the uh, undercards and the confrontations between the upper card wrestlers throughout on TV, and then they finally met the pay-per-view. Now at wrestling, you get the champion fighting his main antagonist every week on Raw. That's kind of why I stopped watching wrestling, because it's like, why go to the pay-per-view? You're seeing the same thing you saw every week on TV for a month. But yeah, so comic book's a little bit different now, but back then, when they had major characters, there was a build-up to them. And Mr. Sinister was one of them. He was in the background manipulating people, and then when he finally came out, he turned out to be such a bad bleep, and bleep myself. But anyway, that's my unboxing for now. I'm going to go ahead and show you these figs on the close-up again thanks for watching subscribe turn on notifications spread this on social media help us grow i appreciate it tell all your friends if they like geek stuff 
follow us. I'm going to be doing more and more and more. Enjoy. Happy hunting. Geek out.